Hey everyone, it's Ann Monero. Welcome to today's live color along. I just need to kind of move my camera a little bit. Apparently Scarlett is trying to photobomb our video this morning. So, um, I think that's better. That's some, I don't know. I think that's better. Just can't tell. So good morning everyone. Welcome to today's live color along. This morning we are coloring. Sorry about that. This morning we're coloring with warm colors and we're going to talk about, um, what warm colors actually are, kind of appropriate on a cold winter day, wouldn't you say? And uh, we're still coloring from Color Along Volume 13. We have, um, oh, what's the matter, baby? We have this page right here, which is also from my book, Graceful Mandalas. And the other thing I have with me this morning is a flip through of my new book, Sloth Mania. So excited about this book. Um, and I don't even know where it came from and why I started drawing it. Uh, but I'm excited about this book. So I have um, my printed pages of Sloth Mania, right, Scarlett? And I will have my actual book on Wednesday. So uh, as soon as I get my book, I'll do a live flip through of the actual book. And Scarlett, if you stop panting, it would be so much better. So let's say good morning to everyone before we get started. I'm a little bit early this morning. I don't know what happened. I think I was trying to set up a different type part of the camera. But uh, who's here with us? Good morning, Alexandria and Mamie. Savannah, Good. thanks for joining us this morning. Good morning, Alice. Good morning to Mamie and Cheryl. Um, so uh, I have colored pencils with me this morning. I have marker of fiends. And uh, before we start, I think I'll actually do a little bit of a flip through, through uh, of Sloth Mania while we wait for everyone else to get here because we don't want to, we don't want to start, we don't want to start the party without everybody, right? So this is Sloth Mania and Sloth Mania um, has 24 pages to color, kind of drawn in the style of Mushroom Mania. And um, I'm kind of keeping with that that particular theme of that series of, uh, of books, like I have the view books. Good morning, Heather. Good morning, Sharon. Um, so Sloth Mania has 24 pages to color. There's a page on my Facebook page that you can print out yourself a free page. My dogs are playing in the background. That's what you hear in the background. Um, there's a page that you can print out from my Facebook page and you can color it and post it everywhere. And that page is posted there, and if, you'll, if you read through the comment in that post, um, it's funny because you know how you go to coloring groups and people say to you, or different coloring book artists will say, here's a free page, but do not, do not share it anywhere. Um, and do not put this on a group, and do not share this on Instagram or Pinterest, or it's only for you. Well, I have the opposite attitude lately, and I have a free page for you, and I want you to share it everywhere. I mean everywhere. I want you to share it on your Facebook page, your Instagram page. Uh, you can put it on Pinterest. You can put it on the window of your car. I don't care. You could tattoo it on your body. I, I mean, I want you to share that page everywhere. Um, and get the word out and get more people uh, coloring that page and sharing that page and getting involved with the sloth lifestyle. So it's funny because um, somebody that bought one of these books, bought a sloth book, actually said to me before they even started coloring it, are you going to do a second one? <laughs> and I started thinking, maybe I need sloth wisdom in different types of things that the, that the sloths say. Alexandria, hey Alexandria. Alexandria says it's snowing here and headed your way. Is it headed my way? Because I'm a little confused about the forecast. I thought it's going to be just like freezing rain, uh, drizzle, wintry mix. I'm not really sure. So sometimes you all can tell me the better, the better forecast. But if the behavior of my dogs is any indication of what the weather is about to be, because you know dogs can get a little nutty when it's about to snow. They're a little nutty right now. So hey, good morning Trish. Good morning Lisa. So the Sloth Mania is on Amazon, and it's on my, my website um, as a PDF or a hard copy. And this book is only $5.99. Five, I feel like I'm on QVC. $5.99. $5.99 for a very, very short time, only for a few days. Um, so, but I will say this. The more books that are sold at that $5.99, then I would imagine when the price goes up that maybe it, that Amazon would put it up, that would keep it on sale. Good morning, Chris. Hey, good morning, Bonnie Miller. So, <clears throat> if you have a chance to check out this book, this is a cool book for the uh, the slow poke in your life. Um, uh, I don't know. The Anyone who likes to color something cute and adorable, 
cute and adorable. And if you notice, this book not only has the same style as maybe like Mushroom Mania or Oh Christmas Tree Mania that I just released, but it also kind of has a view style or frenzy style look to it with some of the, some of these pages with the backgrounds like that. And then some pages have more of an empty background and um, to kind of let you kind of go to town with it and really kind of fill in that area, maybe create a night sky or a galaxy. That would be kind of cool, sloths in the galaxy. Slots in space, right? We have Rachel from Card Services calling us, apparently. We don't know who this is. We don't want to answer this phone call. I think I'm, I'm just actually, I was actually thinking that maybe I need a, a coloring book uh, with, um, about the telemarketer calls. You know, Rachel from Card Services, Gloria from the cruise line, Walt from the, I don't even know what Walt is from. The Microsoft guy who I tell him that the windows are open. You know, all those kind of crazy I don't know. What do you think? What do you think, Bonnie? What do you think, Chris? All right. Hey, Gene Mellinger and Sarah's here with us this morning. All right. So Sloth Mania. There you go. There's the, the book for Sloth Mania. But this morning we are gathered to color um, a page from Graceful Mandalas. Uh, this is going to be colored in warm colors. I've actually got um, my marker, my pack of marker Rafines and Crayolas. And I did that because I kind of want to do maybe a, a, a harder lead pencil. And Here's some Crayola colored pencils that I have in this little case that um, that I have. And I think maybe this might be might work out better. But the first thing, let's talk about warm colors. You know, um, warm colors, the colors can be classified as uh, cool, light, cool, warm, or light, warm. So we're going to kind of talk about what is a warm color. And, you know, colors have meanings. And inside um, my... Uh, coloring handbook volume two actually I have a cop I have it right here with me um, there is a page that talks about the meaning of colors and each color that's out there has its own little meaning it's a little meaning right is that funny it would be funny huh crazy phone call from A to Z crazy phone calls or the crazy stories that happen I don't know crazy stories that, that we go we, we uh, uh, that happen to us every day in our lives Weird stuff, you know? I leave the house sometimes and then I think, what could possibly happen today? And each time I'm surprised. Uh, thank you, Jean. I just saw that you bought that sloth book. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Um, so the meaning of colors. So, you know, packaging in every product that we purchase, especially food, um, is really uh, geared to the color choke for the package is kind of classified to different things. For example, something that's red. Red kind of means passion or power or love. But if you notice some sort of food that is really bad for you, like Doritos, or I think of uh, DiGiorno frozen pizza, or um, I really kind of think of Doritos, actually. Doritos in that red bag um, is really something. So if it's something like a, a fast food or a junk food or a quick food um, or a frozen food, it's, it's going to be in that red color that's not really completely healthy for you versus something like healthy choice frozen meal would be green and green means shocked or surprised I don't know why that has anything to do with maybe you're shocked or surprised that it's good for you or it tastes delicious I don't know why they they chose that green color for uh something healthy but usually something healthy that's organic is going to be in the green family so um we don't really want to eat blue food right? You don't really want to eat something that's blue. And if the packaging was all about like tan, maybe we might think, eh, not doesn't really taste so great. So take a look at what the packaging is. You know, when we look at um, different products that are out there, different products that we're using, that McDonald's fries come in a red box. Thank you, Jason. Good morning, Jason. Um, yeah, you're right. Exactly. McDonald's fries come in a red box. And, you know, look at yellow. The, the definition of yellow or the meaning of yellow is happy and uplifting. And there you go. The McDonald's golden arches are yellow. So um, so when we talk about warm colors, which I have a graphic that I need to share with everyone, but I can't pop it on here as a photo. Uh, but different warm colors would be in the, the different colors that would be classified as warm would be dark brown, in the browns, like dark brown, brown, beige, and then the red family, like red, rust, orange, not orange, but orange, I'll say it like that and green olive, the green family. So we're going to call it today's page in that family of colors. We'll use uh, uh, my friend orange, we can use some teal, we can use some uh, red, just to kind of get the feel for different types of um, 
warm colors. And you know, color is a personal choice. Like what's your favorite color? Do you have a favorite color? Because uh, when we talk about the color orange, it, mean, it, it the meaning of that is energy and vitality. And when we talk about brown, it's safe and honest. It's like, you know, secure. Um, so maybe that kind of makes you feel good. So a warm color would make you feel good. As opposed to a cool color would be something like a fuchsia. Um, although fuchsia in that magenta color that's listed here on this We Neal Colors page is optimism or balance, it's more of a cool color or a blue-green is a cool color or a purple. Um, in the meaning of purple, powerful, <clears throat> powerful or luxurious. So I, so we're going to focus on the warm colors. Um, and do, as we call this page, so I'm going to use some reds and some orange and some, uh, maybe like a, a rust color, um, a little bit of yellow, and we can actually put in some brown that kind of would make it look, look interesting. So that is where we're at today. So hopefully everyone is, uh, is keeping up, right? Keeping up with what happened, what's happening this morning. So I've got some Crayola pencils here. I've got this dark orange. I've got a light orange. Let's pull out some different ones. I like these because they have a really hard um, lead to them. They're kind of like a fall color in a way. Um, the other color that I'm going to pull into this is some green. I'm going to pull my colors out ahead of time this time. I don't usually do that, but I'm going to kind of change my ways today, I guess. And then... Um, let's really just kind of add some red in this too. So I've got some orange, some light orange, red, brown, uh, green, and we've got to find some yellow. I've got a Faber-Castell yellow. I love that pencil. Um, what other colors should we add in here? Kind of a teal color too would be a good color to add. Um, and I have a really nice teal color with this. Um, it's called Azure Green actually, but it could be a good teal color. Oh, Aqua Green. I'm sorry. It's called, so it's called Aqua Green. But then there's another one here that is more of a green blue. So I'm not sure which one I'm going to use. We'll see what happens as I'm moving along. Um, and then any other color that I'm going to add into that, I think I'll just go with what's there. That's good, a good amount of colors, wouldn't you say? Let's make sure that they're all sharpened because this is kind of a quick, um, a, a, a lot of fine lines or small spaces. So I want to make sure they each have a really good point. I'm using my Boston electric sharpener. Hey, Colleen Boyle. Hey, Diana. Let's hope that the sound of that was not that it was stopping. Oh, that didn't sound good, did it? All right, well, maybe red is not our, is not for us today. I don't know. All right, so I'm going to start out with this lighter orange color, and it's actually called light orange. I'm going to start out with this middle section, and we could either, you could blend, you could shade, or you could start out with a darker color. I'm just going to kind of go with a uh, light color here, or medium pressure. I'm going to do medium pressure here, just for this center. <clears throat> and then we don't know what that noise is. What is that noise? I keep hearing crazy things going on. So I don't know what's happening with the weather that's coming my way, but Alexandria always tells me what's going on for weather in my area. So what what's the what's my forecast, Alexandria? What what kind of weather should we should I expect? You know, I I've decided that winter is just exhausting. How about all of you? It has gives you too many things to do cancellations um you know if you have to be somewhere and maybe you might have to cancel something I, it's just it's not a hunker down type thing for me i don't know if anybody else feels like that especially when it's like ice the cleanup so We've got this, just that kind of a, a lighter orange. And I'm going to flip over to uh, this darker orange, which is just called orange. And I'm just going to give it a heavier pressure in the middle. Oh, that really broke, didn't it? You hear that? That was breakage. Here is green blue, kind of a turquoise color, nice and warm. And again, I'm using a heavier, well, look at that. I hate when that happens. 
when the pencil when the lead falls out of the pencil we don't really know why I'm not having a good time with my pencils today in my sharpener and then I'm going to use my um, yellow actually for the every others kind of a funky little look to it and then if I use my yellow again on the out on, as we move out I'm still some color from the center of the mandala out that basically means that you are going from within and out expressing yourself from in inward and out you know when Alice says I wish it was over already already I hate winter I hate it too Alice I just I think that um well, maybe because I guess if I just had like someone to just clean up everything and not have to worry about anything. But when you have to worry about the cleanup, right, Alice? Even if it's just the coordination of getting everything and then worrying about, well, am I going to be able to get to the store? Do I need to go? I don't know. Hey, Bev Larson. Uh, Lynn Miller, Lynn Miller. Lynn Miller, are you back here in, uh, in the frozen tundra yet? Or are you still uh, hanging with Mickey and Minnie? So yesterday was the reveal for Secret Santa. Did everyone see their Secret Santa uh, re people? Who was their Secret Santa? I'm going to use brown for this one right here. Kind of an interesting mix of colors in this festive little holiday season, isn't it? Now, if I do a heavier pressure here on this side of it, I think it might look a little bit different. little heavy pressure there on that little tiny triangle right there that's peeking out it is a Monday isn't it it's a good way to start out the week though isn't it gathering together with friends coloring okay so there's my my sections there and I think I'll pull in some green another warm color maybe for this portion here and I'm just doing kind of a light pressure I think my dogs wore themselves out both of them are fast asleep there we go it's kind of a medium pressure for this um, there we go. Hey, Dawn. I know snow is so pretty. It is, but from a distance, it's even prettier, Alexandria. And when you don't have to shovel it, it's even prettier. Do you want me to send you a box of snow, Alexandria? I think I maybe I need to send her a box of snow. Aren't you getting snow? How much snow are you getting? Getting on a train in a few hours, Lynn is telling us. Safe travels, Lynn. It seems like you just left like yesterday, honestly. I feel like I looked at the calendar and I said, I remember when we were talking about your trip that you went on, that you're on. And I remember when I said to you, I was writing down on my calendar when you would be gone um, because of uh, Secret Santa. And I, I looked at the calendar and said, is it already December 16th? This is crazy. My pencils are giving me problems today also. Maybe it's something that's going on, Bev. I don't know. Pencil problems. Hey, if that's the biggest problem you have today, then we're doing good, don't you think? If my only problem today is that I my lead of my pencil is breaking, then I am doing pretty good. Snow isn't so lovely on the end of a shovel. <laughs> you said it. That would make a good shirt, wouldn't it? There, this pencil just does not want to be part of it. I don't know what it is. It just doesn't want to. Oh, well, there we go. I have to put a um, a graph, a regular number two pencil in here to finish to fix it. I know, Lynn. It seems like you left like yesterday. Did it go by quick? Went by quick for me. <laughs> I 
that was fast. It was a fast uh, couple of weeks, you know? So this is red. Kind of looks a little Christmassy though, doesn't it? Um, and right here also. Right here. Uh, see, it broke again. What the heck? Bev. <laughs> Sharon says, we're saying that S word way too many times today. All right, we're not going to talk about it. Let's talk about... Um, you know, we start, need to start talking about something else that maybe we could benefit by. Since everything I seem to say, we kind of falls into my or falls into our laps, right, Sharon? So, is there something else that you would like to say? Maybe we should start talking about like, um, um, I don't know, what other other thing do we want to have want to manifest into our lives? Maybe we need to start having like law of attraction seminar seminars or like let's attract, let's manifest our what we want. So if we want sun, maybe we need to talk about 90 degree weather or 70 degree weather. Um, I don't know. What should we what should we do, Sharon? It was fast, but I'm ready to go home. Oh, Lynn. That was an exhausting trip. I, I'm tired for you. Bonnie says, I'm loving the lack of snow in my area. Oh, wait a minute. I'm sorry. I'm loving the lack of the S, S blank. Fill in the blank. In my areas of New Hampshire so far, last year this time we had a ton of it on the ground. Oh, I remember when you were complaining about that. Hello, Barb. So here's my turquoise color again. Hey, don't forget to share this color along on your Facebook page or coloring group or wherever you want to share it out to. I've got some new plans happening for uh, 2020. Do you make New Year's resolutions for the, for the new year? I usually don't. Um, I usually have like a different type of project going on but right now I have like too many projects happening in my life all at once I don't know what happens to me I go on like a, a kick a kick of like a lot of projects that I want to have want to happen at once there's like a lot of balls in the air right now What does manifest mean? Manifest means that you um, bring it into into like your reality. So if you say that you want a uh, million dollars, you want to manifest a million dollars into your life and you want to, um, you think positively, you know, live as if you already have it type thing and um, you'll bring it into your life. You'll make it, you'll make it become real. Does that make sense, Barb? Lisa says, I have goals, not res. Oh, spring. Yes, spring. You're right, Sharon. Um, Lisa says, I have goals, not resolutions. Yeah, I do, too. I guess I do. I have goals. But you never know how it's going to change. I was reading something the other day. It said, uh, take a moment to remember what's happening right now because this time next year, it, things will be different. Come on down here. It is 65 degrees outside and sunny. Okay, we will be there. I ordered paint paper for my printer. Oh, good idea. Which one did you order, Lynn? Here's yellow. We painted um, the other day at painting class. We painted a Van Gogh painting because every once in a while, when you're when you paint, you have to paint. You need to paint a master, a paint a, a painting by a famous painter, famous artist, and it teaches you how to. Um, it, it teaches you new techniques. You learned more. You learn something about that artist. You uh, can. It just kind of gets you out of your comfort zone. What do you think, Lisa? Lisa had said it was a new challenge. It gets you out of your comfort zone. Um, kind of just we did Van Gogh's bedroom scene, bedroom the other day, other day. That was a lot of fun, wasn't it, Lisa? So here's just yellow on all of these. Okay. Now, let's move on to pulling one of the colors that's from the middle. See, I kind of keep them with my same colors. I've got this dark color here. Um, and then this was red. But I think I'm going to add this lighter orange here. 
it's kind of a fun page. This book has um, graceful mandalas, has uh, pages that have these mandalas on a black background like this, and then the same mandalas on a white background. And then it also has pages like a notebook that you could use like as a journal. It's like a, uh, a journal book. It's uh, a coloring book slash journal. And on the journal pages, it has uh, a little miniature mandala in the corner. There's two volumes of this book actually. All right, so there's that one. Now, I guess I'll go with my every other by bringing in this, um, well, I don't wanna bring that turquoise color. We could bring in brown to the next ones. I was definitely uncomfortable at first. Were you really? Lisa's talking about the Van Gogh painting that we did. Um, well, you know, it was all about learning like different ways to uh, create texture with different, with smaller brush strokes and I finished mine, so I posted a finished page somewhere. I think it was on my Facebook page. Bev says, my goal is to make it through winter without hurting myself from shoveling. That would be nice. That's a really good goal, actually. I know someone that, um, it, it's amazing how, how, how hurt you can get in um, that type of weather. I'm not going to say that word. That S word. Lisa says, I was definitely uncomfortable. Okay, I ended up loving the detail. I know, I want to do another one. I did my uh, cabin painting that I, remember that cabin painting that we had done? And um, I feel like I just want to keep painting the same painting, like Georgia O'Keeffe, how she painted like all doors, like a whole bunch of doors. I told somebody I wanted to do that and they kind of laughed at me. And then I thought to myself, is this like crazy person behavior? I don't know. What do you think? Could be. Maybe I've lost my mind. I'm just going to keep painting the same thing over and over and over. But, you know, uh, art, that's what people do. That's what It's like an artist thing. Look at Van Gogh. He painted all those sunflowers. Um, I mean, Andy Warhol painted all those soup cans. It's what happened. It's, it's, it's what happens, you know? All right. So now I've got this, this kind of turquoise color here. But I think I'm going to go with some darker orange instead. Yes, I, uh, Alice is asking, do you consider brown as a warm color? Yes, I do. Well, be careful, Bev. I don't, we don't want to see you get hurt. Yeah, I do consider brown a warm color. I love brown, actually. I have a lot of brown around me. I love a brown blanket. Plus, brown looks good with, uh, with blue or pink. It's a good complementary color. I actually have brown walls in one, in a room, in one room in my house. Um which I was kind of skeptical about doing that, but then when I did it, it really kind of changed the whole look of the room. It used to be like a, um, it used to be like a peach color, very light peach color. And I always just felt like the room just looked st very stark and it didn't have like a comfortable, cozy feeling to it. And then when I painted it brown, and I mean, it's brown, brown. It's not like a, um, a light brown. It's like, it's dark chocolate it's like a chocolate color i guess and um it really kind of changed the whole thing so it gave it more of a different feel even the room i'm in right now has dark blue walls do you love brown too alice yeah i do i love it it's really kind of um you could it's it, people kind of even gray i mean gray looks really good too even though it's kind of a Maybe you could consider it a dismal color, but I really kind of like how brown looks. But, I mean, think about that meaning of brown, that it means safety, you know? I wonder if he ate all the soup in the end. Who are we talking about? Oh, Andy Warhol. Sorry, Bev. See? 19-second delay on color longs. I have a 19 sec. My memory only lasts 19 seconds. It's official. I don't know if he ate all that soup. That's a good question. He floated away. What a character. What an odd character. All right, so see we have that dark orange right there. And then we've got this color here. We want to make sure it kind of, it doesn't like 
coincide with anything. So let's go with the green because we don't really have that green color happening right now. Put green here. So I'm trying to make sure that my colors kind of stay away from one another so that they are not, uh, you know, touching. We don't want my colors to touch. It's like when you're eating, you don't want your food to touch. I'm not like that. Are you not, are you a uh, don't let my food touch type person? I just mix it all together. Salad on top of pizza, you know, back to the food, Alice. I'm going to say it before Alice does. Alice is going to say we're back to food again. Hey, it's better than the S word, right? Oh, we should paint an Andy Warhol. That's a good idea, Lisa. We could just paint like, um, I don't know, soup. Or, you know, and I, I remember some people do like a Andy Warhol project where they uh, do their own um, version of like his Marilyn Monroe with the four different um, versions of it. I do like gray too, Lynn. But nothing beats black. Nothing beats black pants, black shirt. Right? Just black. Black on black. It just kind of, it stops me from, it just makes me uh, have more time to think. More time to think about the things. I'm going to go back to this turquoise. Design a soup can. Oh, that would be cool. That would be very, very cool. Could design, design our own soup can. You know, it's funny because now, speaking of that, of designing a can, did you know that in the there's this whole new movement with like craft beers or people like microbreweries, and they, instead of having a can that they have to pay a lot of money for, to um, like for the beer can, instead of them buying a lot of people, a lot of like cans that are all already printed, the new thing now in the craft beer world, I don't even know how I know this, is that they have these la labels that are created that are stick on and they stick the label onto this empty can. So someone that is a, a microbrewer and brews their own beer, um, which is kind of a trendy thing now, isn't it? Um, they actually can just buy these empty cans, these blank cans. Maybe we should design a soup can, Lisa, that, yeah, black pants every day. Me too, Lynn. Um, maybe we should design a, uh, a soup can um, and then we can put it on the actual soup can. You know? That would be kind of cool. Dawn says, my craft room is gray with a dark turquoise wall. Yeah, the wall in my in this room is more of like a... Um, it's called blue. But, you know, it's I forgot what the name of the blue was called. Um, but it's a dark blue. Like a turquoise color, I guess. It needs to be painted in here big time. That should be an interesting project for the spring. I can't add it to my list of projects right now. It's just too long. Do you agree on black too, Bev? Yeah, you gotta go with black. Black on black. Sharon is saying, I've got a lot of blue in my home and gray. I think color is so personal to everyone. Blue is just so calm, calm and peaceful to me. Calming and peaceful to me. Yeah, me too. I agree with you. And you know what's funny is that people always say, well, I don't know what color to use with something. But I always say, look around your house. I mean, I'm sure you have, like, good colors that match a personal choice. I mean, I'm sure you're not the little girl walking down the store in Walmart, walking down the Walmart aisle wearing, um, what happened to my dark art? Oh, here you know, wearing, uh, uh, you know, a fuzzy sweater with, um, Cowboy boots in the middle of August, right? Can purple be a warm color? Yes. Purple can definitely be a warm color, especially the shade of purple. Like if it's a really harsh purple, I'm going to actually pop a link here um, that really kind of talks about um, a lot of warm colors. I'm going to pop a link over here. It's this, um, it's actually a list of warm colors on a Pinterest board. See if I can get to it. I'm going to pop it right here. Yeah, that would be cool, wouldn't it? At least if we just put the label right on the can, you know? Could do it on paper. That would be awesome. Uh, Dawn says, I have quite a blue also in my house. Yeah, I have blue, I have purple, I have green. I have a lot of different colors happening. Colleen says, let me see. Oh, Bonnie doesn't wear black. No, Bonnie, some people don't like it. 
Uh, Colleen says, Aminara, do you feel that when you use black colored pencils, the black colored pencils bring your coloring pages to life, even though some of your colored pages have black backgrounds? Yes, because the black makes it pop. And if we go back into this page, actually, and we kind of add a little bit of black, which I think I might do now that you're telling me this, um, it, we're going to see how we can make it pop. Or do you use silver or white to brighten your backgrounds when your coloring pages have black backgrounds? I don't. They don't wear that many layers at Walmart. I'm not really sure what that comment means, Lisa. Depends on if it has more red or blue in it. Um, yeah, I don't really, I wouldn't put, so this has a black background and I'm not going to put anything on top of it. I'm not going to add anything uh, to that. So, you know, this, this is the color along that we usually do on a Monday. But this week, actually, on Thursday at 10 a.m., this Thursday the 19th, I'm having um, another Draw Live session. And if you've never attended my Draw Live session, because they've been kind of weird lately, um, but I made a commitment to everyone um, last month when we were talking about it and said I would go back to doing them the old way I was doing them. So Draw Live is actually happening this um, this uh Thursday at 10 a.m. and we meet for about an hour and I draw a coloring page live. I have no idea what I'm going to draw that day. Honestly, really, I do not know what I'm going to draw at this point. But what ends up happening is, for most of you that have watched them and follow them along, um, usually draw live, whatever gets drawn during draw live hap ends up turning and coming, going into, turning into its, uh, a new coloring book. So a lot of coloring books were born at draw live. Skimpy dresser shop at Walmart. <laughs> you think, Lisa? So funny, isn't it? <clears throat> Although Dollar Tree, too. Like the lady I saw coming out of Dollar Tree that was not wearing pants. So when I had to do a double take. Isn't it funny the crazy stories that you can like that happen throughout the day? Alice says when people ask me what my favorite color is, I always say purple. But when I buy shirts, I tend to buy blue and red. It, weird. It, well, you know what? Just because it's your favorite color doesn't mean you wear it. Like for instance, my favorite color is kind of like a fuchsia or a magenta, but I'm not really wearing a fuchsia or a magenta. So you can wear something that is not your favorite color. I mean, you don't have to like, maybe maybe you want to keep your favorite color a secret. <laughs> Chris is saying, and people who go commando shop at Dollar Tree. And Chris, how do you know this? I'm afraid to ask. I'm kind of getting a little scarred. Oh, I forgot this one. I am, I'm afraid to ask Chris, but how do you know this? Do you think you could tell when someone's not wearing underwear? No pants, body. You got it. She was not wearing pants. He was just crazy. That's all I want to say. Just crazy. All right. So I'm going to put uh, some brown next for this little doohickey that's sticking out there. Notice I got, I got rid of the doohickey on the screen because everyone told me it was blocking their view. I'm going to find a different way to do that. <clears throat> All right, now, Colleen was mentioning about the black, right? So let's see if I have a black color pencil. <clears throat> I hope I do. <laughs> Dawn, oh, Dawn is saying, our Walmart and Dollar Tree are boring. You don't have people that have uh, no underwear or no pants going on in your Walmart or Dollar Tree, Dawn? Literally no pants. You got it. Literally no pants. I, I was like, what the heck? Are her, pa are her pants beige? But no, those were her legs. No pants. Oh, no, she had underwear on, Chris. She did, thank God. But she, she had underwear on. She just didn't have pants on. Crazy people. The funniest part is, do you think that she would know that we were talking? Imagine if she knew we were talking about her right now. That would be really hysterical. All right, so I'm sharpening my white and my black, and I'm actually going to, by per, per Colleen's suggestion, thank you. You don't see that type of stuff? Oh, you have boring people, Dawn. 
boring, boring. All right, I'm gonna take a little bit of black and I'm just gonna kind of add a little bit of black into these little, you know, the corners or the um, the little, the nooks, not really the nooks and crannies, this is the nook. I guess if you were gonna say a nook and cranny, this would be the nook. It's the nook of the north. Is it, what is that? The nook of the north? Is that what that saying is? I don't know, that person. So it's just kind of in this little corner. So this little like nook where that kind of goes into there. All right, now let's put some more black, um, kind of like right here, just to kind of, I'm gonna do kind of behind the yellow, just to kind of make it look like this yellow. And that's gonna make the yellow part look like it's popping. It looks like maybe almost like 3D. You know the 3D mandala books? Well, the whole point of the 3D mandala books, the reason why they're 3D is they have that, um, it, they have that, I'm laughing at Heather's comment. At least you think you did. I hope she had underwear on. Nothing surprises me anymore either, Heather. Nothing surprises me. You know? It's crazy. I don't know what's gonna happen today. Where do I have to go today? Oh, I need to go to the bank. That should be interesting. The bank is usually kind of boring. So I don't know if the bank is gonna be any uh any type of activity. I'm gonna put see how that kind of made it a little bit like it's gonna pop out with that thing behind it. Oh, Colleen, I'm glad you mentioned this. Colleen said I was just curious when you add black and white in your coloring pages. I'm glad that you said this because it really kind of makes a difference. But the other thing that happens when you add white, and I'm going to add it right here just to uh, kind of see and kind of it can it can enhance it as Heather is saying. Um, but it also acts as a colorless blender. So here is the white, um, and I'm going to use this as a colorless blender here. And what that is doing to this uh, light orange color here is it's just kind of blending it and blending it together within itself. So it's almost like um, it's making it creamier. Is that a good way of describing it? What do you all think? I guess that's a good way of describing it. Making it a little creamier. So it's kind of not getting rid of maybe the graininess of it. It could be making it a little bit lighter. Um, so it's not really lightening it as much as it's blending it within itself. So it would be like, um, it reminds me of frosting, like to spread the frosting evenly. Maybe say they need to add the room, no shoes, no shirt, no pants, no enter, no service. No kidding, no pants. It's crazy. Or how about people that put their, does anyone have a dog that they take to the supermarket? I mean, I don't want to insult anyone right off the get-go here, but um, people that take their dog to the supermarket and put it in the shopping cart. I'm sorry, but I'm a dog lover. I don't like it. Does anybody else feel like this? I'm not sure if I like someone's dog with their dog butt in my shopping cart. They wear around placing my food. You know, it's weird. <clears throat> okay, so now I'm going to go back with my black. And let's see if we can kind of put um, some more nooks and crannies here. Or a little bit of a nook in this little corner. So when you add a line, rather than outlining it with black, if you add kind of that black onto the underside of the line, that is where it will create it. And Heather is reading my mind right now because she's saying black creates shadows, makes it more dimensional. Thank you, Heather. Heather, are you reading my mind today? Heather is like the narrator of my thoughts. I can't be responsible for whatever else I'm thinking, Heather. Nothing bad. Just wondering about the dog in the shopping cart is what I'm wondering about. Yeah, that is a health violation, Trish. I agree. Lisa says, I do not put Clarence in the cart. It's gross. Yeah, these are like little dogs, you know? Or, you know, when people carry around like a little dog, um, the like emotional support dog, when they just kind of carry it around. Um, I mean, if you really, really, and truly need an emotional support dog, then that is fine. But when they put them in the shopping cart, I'm not really sure I like that. Kind of bugs me. All right, so here is, I'm just kind of enhancing this yellow a little bit, just to kind of give it a little bit more. 
You don't like it either, Bonnie? No, I do not like it. Dawn is saying, I have seen a few in Walmart lately that should not be there. That makes it harder for those that have service, service drugs. Yes. It's just great minds think alike, Heather. That's all. Don't you think? That's all it is. All right. Now, we've got this orange here. I feel like I just want to make this uh, darker orange little doohickey thing that's sticking out. I'm going to call these the doohickeys. Really dark. But I don't really think I want to do much else to this. Um, <clears throat> because I just kind of want it to be... Boy, Scarlet is really snoring. Um, I just kind of want it to be kind of like sticking out like that. Apparently, Scarlet is not um, impressed by our dog story. Oh, well, Bev, there's a, I don't know. I think it's a good tie. Bev's saying I'd rather have uh, the dog in the cart than a poopy diaper. Okay, granted, I'm not really sure which I would rather have. To me, they're equal. I'm going to say they're equal, Bev. It's tough, isn't it? Does she read your mind too, Chris? Heather's kind of, she's a mind reader. Spooky. It's like finishing someone's thoughts. Finishing the conversation. Or even more, even funnier than that, or crazier than that, is when you can just kind of look over at someone and you just kind of start laughing. And you're just like cracking up over the same thing. Inconsiderate people, the world is full of them. It's a crazy world we live in, isn't it, Diana? Bonnie says they should at least be in a carry bag of some of some kind. Sharon says, I think the service dog thing is valid for those who need it, but I also think that there are people who are abusing that just to take the animals everywhere with them, and that is wrong. I totally, totally agree with that, Sharon. And, you know, I would love to take my dogs with me everywhere, but, you know, my dogs don't like going to a store at all. Like, I don't take them to the pet store or anything to shop. I just don't. I think Scarlet, Scarlet's the kind of dog that if you, first of all, I never take them off a leash. I went walking yesterday, um, and um, I always walk at this uh, this local local college campus, and here I am walking, right? It was kind of cold outside, so I was kind of walking at a fast pace just to because I was freezing, but I was kind of enjoying those fresh air finally, and the sun was out, and um, all of a sudden, I go to look in the distance, and there's this woman walking this dog, and it was like a German Shepherd mix style, very large dog, and it she didn't have it on a leash, and I kind of was like, I don't really want to wa want to run to make a spectacle of my spectacle of myself with this dog because he might come running to me thinking, hey, we're playing, um, but at the same time, I was like, I'm not really sure who this dog is, and I love dogs. But I also love dogs that are not gonna be not gonna jump on me. It's like the time when Paisley was a puppy. I had taken her walking and taken her for a walk and I had her on a leash. And all of a sudden, this pack of dogs, these people came out with this pack of dogs, and they were walking their dogs all off a leash. There was like eight of them. And Paisley, she was like maybe six months at the time, she completely stopped and she would not get up. She just stopped. Maybe she was eight months at the time. Would not get up. Well, Paisley's a big dog, so in eight months, she was probably 50 pounds at that point. And now I had to carry her <laughs> back to the car. And we must have walked at least four or five parking spaces. And I was like, by that, at that point, I was, I just kind of said, boy, am I out of shape <laughs> carrying a 50 pound dog. Um, does she need your mind, Chris? Alice is saying, I like to wear leggings, but I wear a shirt that is big enough to comes down over my butt. Have you ever seen someone that's wearing leggings and their butt stuck up their leggings? Yes, I have. And you want to wonder, do they have underwear on? I want to poke my eyes out. I guess that's considered Walmart people. Oh, no, it's everywhere now, Chris. Uh, Alice, everywhere. I think I can handle a dog better than a pantsless person. Yeah, no kidding, huh, Mamie? Dawn says, if they were well-trained, it is on, but a lot do not have well-trained dogs. To have them off a leash, I would never take mine off a leash. But you know what, too, Dawn, is that it's fine. Like, you could have the most well-trained dog, right? But something might get their attention, you know? Like, I, I mean, I think that Scarlet would, if I ever let Scarlet off a leash, she would see something in the distance, like a squirrel or a bird or, I don't know, 
something crawling whatever and she would take off because she's too curious and not because she was trying to get away from me but she would take off i would never i just would never especially when the person walks with the walks with the um uh like the leash in their hand like they're a big shot that kind of bugs me i feel like this is like uh you know let's vent about everything that bugs us I didn't mean, I wasn't trying for it to be to be a negative hour with us this morning. Okay, so Graceful Mandela's uh, coloring page. Here's the one that we colored today. Warm colors. Again, purple, I mean, uh, blues. Purple is one of them. Uh, blues, reds, like a turquoise, red, yellow, orange, brown. Um, and just kind of what makes you feel good. You know, what kind of makes you feel like, oh, that's a nice safe color. That's a comfortable color to be around. So that's our finished page for today. So let's see where we're at with this book. So we are done with warm colors. Let's give it a check mark. And next we're, oh, we're coloring again next Monday. Even though it's the 23rd, it's the day before Christmas Eve. Who cares? We are still coloring and we're coloring this page right here. Which I don't know why we picked an autumn, I picked an autumn page for this. I guess I was losing my mind. <laughs> I was doing this book. But, um... Here is Autumn Mandala's, and we're going to be using gel pens for this one. And then we'll be finishing out the year um, with this last one that's called I Love Myself, which I thought was kind of an appropriate page for um, the uh, last color along of the year. And we'll be using oil pastels for this, which will be interesting because look at the small spaces. So that's going to be kind of cool. The only other thing that I wanted to tell everyone about is that um, the color along that is scheduled, and you might want to mark this on your calendar if you're following along here, the color along that's scheduled for March... I'm sorry, it was scheduled for January 27th, which is this Just Five Colors, which is the page with the O, has now been rescheduled to March 23rd. So this is the page, this is now scheduled for March 23rd. Okay? Um, and the reason why that, is ha that has been rescheduled is because the week of, uh, the, I'm, January 27th, we will be at coloring camp. So there is no, we, I always move that color along uh, to a different day. So I just wanted to make sure that everyone knew that. And it's been rescheduled on my Facebook page. Bonnie says, I can't take my dog out in public. Yeah, I mean, I, I can't take them places. I, they don't really want to. Plus there's germs. I don't really want to do that. Lisa says, I sat in my car with Clarence for 30 minutes because I saw two dogs go in off leash. Yeah, isn't that crazy? They were clearly not appropriate to be in Joanne's. I complained to the manager when I got in there. But Lisa, didn't you just have an incident where a dog jumped out of a car? In a parking lot? Mamie says, I have a tiny... Thank you, Bev. I have a tiny Yorkie and would never take her to the grocery store or in public places. Yeah, it just, I don't know. My dogs, they're, they're homebodies. They, they're kicking they're kicking it back. I know, Heather, I agree. That's why I don't go out much. I agree with you. It's like, oh, people. You know when people say people out there? It's people out there. All right, before we uh, depart this morning, let's take another look at uh, the Sloth book, Sloth Mania, which there's a free page. This is the free page that's out on my Facebook page. And unlike other coloring book artists that are telling you and drilling into your head, please do not ever share this page uh, this free page with anyone else I am telling you the opposite and I want you to share it with the world so I want you to share this coloring page with everyone I want you to share it on your Facebook page I want you to share it on Instagram uh, Pinterest anywhere you can possibly think oh Sharon has another pet peeve when someone takes their dog to the cemetery off leash why you know one time I did take my dog to the cemetery and she was on a leash and um, I was spoken to by the people at the cemetery and told me that dogs were not allowed. And which I kind of bothered me because the dog, what if your dog wanted to go? I don't know. That uh, should just be on the leash. Dog says, I have taken my dogs to stores with, that allow them the little one. She does not usually go because she barks at everyone and pees on the floor. <laughs> my pit, she's so good, but only take her to like Lowe's or other stores with loud dogs, but not very often. Yeah, Lisa had... Um, had two Weimaranas jump out of the car in a parking lot at Costco. I'm going to tell the story, Lisa. And um, go after her with her service dog. That would have been scary. I would have screamed. I would have peed my pants. Okay, so the sloth book 
is uh, on Amazon, and this book is only $5.99 right now, only for a few days. It's a low price, and then it'll go up to $8.99. I'm going to say the more books that, that sell at $5.99, then the more uh, likely it is for Amazon to keep it at $5.99. And um, 24 pages to color. Some of them are in this style, where it kind of has the view style or frenzy style in the background, kind of mixed in with some mania style coloring books or... Uh, has a lot of empty spaces that you can kind of add your own thing to it. Um, and they're just basically kind of living the life as a sloth. Yes, Trish. Trish is saying, can I share that one for my martial art kids, arts kids? Yes, please do. I guess a sloth is kind of appropriate for martial arts, right? Trying to center yourself and be grounded and be still and, you know, that type of attitude. So I just wanted to kind of capture their essence. Caps, this is a baby one. And capture, um, I will say, I think this is upside down in the book. I think it is. I might have to fix this. Um, because it's supposed to be like this, and I think it's up, I think it was upside down. Um, I hope I captured their little essence with their claws and their crazy little faces. Um, I don't know what, how I would feel about being with one that was alive. I don't know if I would scare me enough. What do you think? I know Lisa wants to be with one that's alive. Right? Okay, so... I hope you can join me on Thursday at 10 a.m. for Draw Live. Um, I'll be drawing a color, coloring page live on that day. I have no idea what I'm going to draw. Absolutely no idea. I'm not, I don't have another book in sight. I don't have another book in the works right now or even in the, well, I have a list of different books. Sloths shall inherit the earth. <laughs> well, they better hurry up, Lisa. That's all I have to say. They better chop, chop and get on the stick. You know, a sloth lifestyle is like completely not my attitude in life. So it's just interesting that um, I'm not really sure about this slow moving thing. You know, I feel like I need more time in my day to do too many, do the things that I want to do. I feel like there's just not enough time in the day to get everything done that I want to get done. Does anybody else feel like that? Like it's not like, there's just not enough time. There's just, I wish the day was like. 36 hours long instead of 24 and I wish I could only sleep like two hours instead of eight and then I could get so much more done there's a lot I want to learn a lot I want to do does anybody have this attitude Lisa do you feel like this at all Dawn does anybody else feel like this um I don't know it's just a weird a weird attitude that I've had and I'm all about taking my time to um like do something Bonnie says the book online has that picture upside down I think it does, yes, but I'm going to fix it, Bonnie. All you have to do is flip your book over anyway. It's not a big deal, but I am going to go in and fix that book, fix the, the page so it flips it. You know, Alice, a penguin book is actually on my list. Um, there's a huge list going on right now because I had asked all of you about different things. Um, so there's penguins, there's hidden objects, there's gnomes, there's uh, llamas, um, a cell phone view. That was a suggestion. That's a cool one. What does the world look like from the view of a cell phone? I kind of worry sometimes what that might look like, but that would be fun. Um, how to draw um, something, whatever. Uh, floral mania. That would be kind of cool. Some ornate mandalas. Um, and what was the other one? Oh, a cat's view. So I have a huge list. Sometimes there's too much that you have to do that you wish for a sloth day. I hate a sloth day. <laughs> I don't really like a sloth. I mean, I wish for a sloth day, but I'm not really sure I really like a sloth day. It depends. You know, see, Lisa agrees with me. I want more hours in the day. I like to stay busy. I do. I want more hours in the day. And sometimes I lose days or I lose, like, time. Like, sometimes maybe you can't keep up. So, if, you know, it's just weird. I would love to have eight hours of sleep a night. Do you have trouble sleeping, Bonnie? Word search and color. That's another one that, that Heather is telling me. Uh, you know, hey, throw out your book ideas. I'll write them down right now. And I'll we can um I'll add them to my to my giant list. I don't have a, a grand plan. You know how some calling book artists say they have a grant like a plan, like a grand plan of all the books they're gonna do in 2020, like in the next year. I don't have that grand plan. I don't know why. But I just kind of go with the flow. I don't have like a master plan of whatever's happening. All right, so Heather is saying word search in colors. All right, so 
tell me what type what you want to see in a coloring book Heather is saying word search and color like are you searching for what to color or you just want word searches and coloring pages always very cool to get everybody's everybody's input um one of the things I am thinking of doing, I don't know if um, they tell me not to talk about this stuff, right? Two people told me never talk about your book ideas when you're um, until you do them, but I don't know. I disagree with it. Sorry. Right, so here's one one thing that I am working on. I am working on putting together a draw along book, and um, I don't know if we're going to start in January or I'm going to start in February. I got to see how far I am, but. Where we would have a, like a color along, but we would have a draw along, and we would draw things like mandalas and still lifes, and um, maybe some abstract type things, or some doodles, or some, um, you know, different whatever d different types of things that we could draw. Hidden objects. Hidden objects is on the list, but I'm gonna add it again. Thank you, Lynn. Hidden objects. A book of inspirational sayings for kids and young adults. Thank you, Lisa. Um, so I, I'm working on this draw along book where it would be free to watch like a color along, but you could draw along. Safari. Ooh. Special sayings for kids and young adults. Thank you, Sharon. You know what I picture happening? I picture it being like this, Sharon. Look, I picture like this is the page, and I picture the the safari being. You know how Scarlet's view is in the the um from the view of the window with the curtains, but I kind of picture it being like the binoculars, and inside here is like the the little safari that's happening, and you can see like I don't know, like a giraffe, a giraffe right here. Really, I can draw. <laughs> Doesn't look it, but yeah, really, I can. You love, love, love the draw along idea, Diana is saying. Well, Diana, thank you very much for saying that. Actually, I'm going to, um, if you don't mind, I'm actually going to send you a message and bounce off some ideas. Can I bounce some ideas off you, Diana, from this uh, draw along book that I'm working on? Because um, I don't want it to be a completely blank book, and it will be. Um, I don't know if it should totally be... Do you think that's a good idea, Sharon? So you get it, right? These are the binoculars. The binoculars. I need a pair of binoculars, actually. Um, and it could be like this glass like this. That would be so funny. It would be the binoculars. I don't know what else would be on a binocular, but maybe there would be something right here that you could adjust like the, you know, focus in. Who was telling me about somebody? Oh, I know who was telling me. I'm not going to say it, though. Um, zoos, parks, national treasures. I'm not sure if I can, the national treasures are a good are able to be done. Um, so my my where I'm stuck, Diana. I'm going to be honest with you. Oh, Alice. Oh, I'm going to can I'm I'm going to bounce some ideas off of you too. Do you mind, Alice? Um, where I'm stuck is that um. Should the book be completely blank? I, it shouldn't be blank, right? But I've got to find a way that it becomes um, something that you can kind of follow along like a workbook. So, and I'm not sure if they should just be completely pre-recorded. A binoculars view. Thank you, uh, uh, Sharon. Um, if they should be completely pre-recorded or if they should be um, live. And then you could go back and watch them. So these are all like the questions that run through my head at three in the middle of the night while I'm lying in bed. Anne's view, what you see that inspires you. Oh, maybe, I don't know. How about what I see that cracks me up? <laughs> How about that? How about all of the things that just make me go, what? Could be that. I thought about doing a colorist view. That would be kind of cool, but I don't know. I also thought about doing people of Facebook. That would be funny. I thought about doing people of Facebook where it was like a coloring page of some sort where on it on the page you could color something. But then there was like a little story. <clears throat> a little story um, that kind of talks about like 
you know, we all know the crazy Facebook people stories, right? We all know that they, we've all we've all encountered them and all uh, have been they've been part of our lives. Let's face it, we can't lie about that. Where we go, can you even believe that happened? You know, there's been some crazy things. Sharon says maybe that book could have lines to start you off, and then you could complete the picture. I do have one like that. I have one like that. I also have this other one where my idea is that some people say that if you draw over the lines, and I think that. Um, Sharon, did you see when we did, when, did you see why I did this, actually? So you draw over the line. So say there's like a, um, a vase of, like a vase right here, okay? And then there's like a little, I don't know if you can even see this because I'm doing this in very light pencil. So it would actually kind of teach you to draw it. So just like you were coloring it. So here you are with your pen and you're drawing, you're assigned, you're, the project, the drawing is to actually kind of go over this and maybe make a line drawing here because you're following over the lines. Or even better, you are actually kind of drawing this with pencil and you wanna learn how to shade this. So here is this line right here and you're gonna shade what's in there. So does that make sense? I, I don't know. We don't know what makes sense anymore. So it would be kind of like drawing over them, just kind of drawing over the different the different lines, but it would still kind of train your hand, just like and train your eye and your hand. Have you ever done a dot to dot? I never have, Lisa, and I cannot imagine how to possibly do them, actually. Apparently, there's like some program, there's some computer program to actually create the dot to dots, and I have never, ever been able to um, even find it, but I've thought about doing it, but it just... Like, where would you put the dots? Like, if you were to do them completely by hand, like, for example, on this page, like, on this little drawing that I just did, like, would you just, I don't know how you do them unless you kind of go like this. I've never, apparently there's, like, a computer way of doing it. I never thought about even doing it like that, but that would be interesting. Diana says, how about a mini pick on the top corner of the page that we have to draw, and then you can show us how. So, Diana, that is actually one of the thoughts I had, was that it would be... Um, I don't have that page actually, but what I thought was that, and I got to get a pen here to do it in a different way, but what I thought was that this would be the page to draw, and then in right here would be the, the drawing that we're going to draw. There's that little still life again. And then here would be the blank page, or, and then you would draw this, you would draw it in this area, or you would have two pages you would have the blank page here. There's probably someone watching this right now and is going to say, oh, what a great idea. I'm coming out with this book. Um, please don't. And then on here would be the still life drawing. So I should draw that a different way, but there's the still life drawing here and here. So when you open the book, you know, hey, see you next time, Trish. Thanks for joining us. So anyway, so that's my, my little like uh, brainstorming session with all of you. It's like a meeting, isn't it? crazy okay so i'm gonna go do some stuff in the real world how about you um i need to go to the bank not really my favorite place to be run a couple of errands see what the forecast is for tomorrow that's on my list of things to do today i hope it's not gonna be the you know that word we don't like okay so I'll see everyone on Thursday for Draw Live. Hope you can join us. And um, we will, um, I don't know what I'm going to draw. Maybe something more of a grayscale illustration style drawing. Maybe draw it based on a photograph. I don't know. I'll have to see what's going on. See what I come up with on that day. See what I'm inspired to do when I wake up that day. And then you cannot force me to force, to, uh, force someone to draw something. You kind of have to draw what you want to draw. Don't you think? Well, thanks for joining me, everyone. Hope everyone has a great day. Um, hope everyone is dressed at the band, too. I agree with you, Sharon. I'll let you know if they are, if they are not. How about that? <laughs> you will be the first to know if they are not. There's always some crazy. How about the, when the tube comes out of the drive-thru and it smells like someone's perfume? Anybody have that happen? Weird stuff happen. Choices, I know. Isn't it crazy? Isn't it crazy, Diana? Okay, everyone. I'm going to sign off. I'll see everyone on uh, Thursday. Have a great day, everyone.